Okay. So today we're going to look at a standard enthalpy. And I'll try and explain what I mean by standard enthalpy as we go along. Uh, standard enthalpy of formation. So this is like a special delta H. A special delta H. It's going to get the symbol F, little, little lowercase, sort of usually drop down subscript F. That's just a label that tells me that it's the standard enthalpy of formation. And it's going to get a little symbol, looks a little bit like the London underground symbol. That's the standard symbol. Okay, so enthalpy change of formation is the enthalpy change when, and rather than writing this as a sentence, I'm going to write it in sort of almost like bullet points, one mole of substance. is formed from the elements with all substances in their standard states under standard conditions. Okay, it's quite a lot going on on there. And yes, you can get asked for this definition in the exam, and it's worth three marks, and yes, you do need to remember all of it. Enthalpy change when one mole of substance is formed from the elements with all substances in their standard states under standard conditions. Okay. I'm going to leave that one mole of substance formed from the elements. Let's do the standard conditions bit first. The standard conditions symbol is that London Underground symbol, circle with a line through it. And it means that we have a, like a, a standard version of this enthalpy change. Standard conditions. People know? Standard conditions? 100,000 Pascals. Very good. 100 kPa. Yeah, that's supposed to be standard atmospheric pressure, 100 kPa. That would be a nice temperature to do things under... 25 degrees Kelvin. It's a nice temperature. It's, it's a warm room, isn't it? 25, that's a warm summer's day, 25 degrees. I like the fact that chemists use standard temperature as 25 uh, degrees C. I'm going to translate that into Kelvin, because we should be starting to think in Kelvin now. That's 298 Kelvin and 273 to 25. Um, yeah, in, in physics, I think their standard temperature is zero. They like to do everything in an ice bath in a physics lab. Chilly. But we, we prefer a warm summer's day in a chemistry lab. Damn right. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the easy bit of this. The standard conditions are uh, standard atmospheric pressure, 100 kPa, standard temperature, uh, 298 Kelvin, 25 degrees C. Okay, that's the easy bit. Let's deal with the rest of it. The enthalpy change form, uh, enthalpy change when one mole of substance is formed from the elements. Let's just try and unpick that a bit. Um, let's say we were going to write the equation for the enthalpy change of 
formation of sodium chloride. The way this will be asked in the exam, so I'm just reading my notes there, read it, write an equation for the reaction that has the enthalpy change that is the standard enthalpy of formation of sodium chloride, is how they're going to ask that, which seems a bit of a mouthful, but that, that's what they're going to say. Write an equation for the formation of sodium chloride that shows the enthalpy change of formation of sodium chloride. So I want you to write an equation that shows me the formation of sodium chloride from its elements. Do you think we can do that? Just have a go. If you get it wrong, it doesn't matter, because you've never done this before. But, but hopefully you know what form from its elements means. So you can have a go at writing an equation to form sodium chloride. So a popular but incorrect answer to this goes like this. So I've got to have sodium. Sodium we always write on its own. But chlorine, we remember, go around as chlorine molecules of Cl2, diatomic molecules, as you said. And then I'd need to balance that. So two of those and two of those. But that's wrong. Why is that wrong? Well, there's a couple of reasons, actually. But yeah, yes, I noticed... You have to one mole. Right, we have to make one mole of substance. So what change do I need to make that to make it one mole of substance? Go on. Right, we have to halve the whole thing. That'll mean that we'll have half a Cl2 there, but that's okay, because we have to have sodium chloride on its own. So one mole of substance, tick, form from the elements, tick, all substances in their standard states. So we're not quite there yet. That wouldn't get us any marks in the exam. What's it missing? The states. Okay, so... Let's do some states. We'll do this on this desk over here. State for sodium. It's a solid at room temperature. Chlorine. If it was aqueous, it wouldn't be an element if, if we added chlorine water, say, yeah? So it has to be just the pure element on its own. And sodium chloride is a solid at room temperature. Okay, now we've got an equation that will get us some marks, or, or a mark. In, in, uh, in the chemistry. All right? Um, do another one for me, please. Could you write the... Um, let's write, say this again. Write the equation for the reaction that has the enthalpy change that is the standard enthalpy of formation of ethanol. Ethanol is a liquid at room temperature. I'll tell you that for, for free. Okay, off you go. So, most people have, have got there now. Uh, you identify that we need carbon and hydrogen and oxygen on the left, because those are the elements. If you think about the forms of these elements, well, carbon, you've studied carbon in your bonding, and you know that carbon has different forms, different allotropes, like diamond and graphite and so on. But they're all solids. And... Carbon, like metals, because it's in a giant lattice structure, we just use the symbol on its own, just, just C on its own, and we need two of them, so it's going to be two carbons. Hydrogens, what's the form of hydrogen in its elemental form? H2, H2. H2 gas. So I've got six hydrogens, so I'll need three of those, and yeah, I just said it's a gas. And oxygen is O2. I need how many? One. So it's got to be a half oxygen gas. Now, there's lots of clever people in here who remember your GCSE well. I'm going to go to which ethanol. How do you make, how is ethanol actually made out in, in the world? Fermentation is one way, and you, you showed me another way a minute ago. What was that? Uh, H2O. Yeah, hydration of? Hydration of 
Ethene. Ethene. That's right. That's how it's made industrially. We make ethene by cracking, and then we add water to that hydration, and, and we'll be doing more on that on the organic that we, that we do later on. What we certainly don't do if we want to make ethanol is, is put some graphite in a box, blow in some oxygen and hydrogen gas and shake the box for a bit, hoping that we'll make ethanol. That's not, that, just, that reaction does not happen. But that's okay. Don't let that worry you, because we form one mole of substance from its elements, and we've got all substances in their standard state. So that would be... The enthalpy of formation, the standard enthalpy of formation for ethanol. That's correct in, in answering your question. All right, so you should be getting the hang of this now. Do me one more. Let's do sulfuric acid. That is also a liquid at room temperature. We'll be dab hands at this now. Somebody want to rattle this off for us? Go for it. S2. Okay, I'm just going to put S for the moment, but I'll come back to that. Okay. Right. Um, we're nearly there. Let's just talk about the elemental form of sulfur. Have you done this yet in your bonding topic? Okay. There's a, there's, a, there's a graph that you'll come across. If I look at the melting points of phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, which are all together in the uh, periodic table there, they, they come one after the other. They're all molecules. What are the melting points look like here? Anyone? Have you seen this before? Melting point or, or boiling point, it's kind of the same. What, what, what are you doing there in the air? Can you, you're, you're not drawing a dip, you're drawing a bump. What, what's at the top of the bump? Phosphorus. No. Okay. Sulfur. Kind of looks like that. What, what is it that determines the melting point or boiling point of a molecule? Go on. Okay, which intermolecular forces are we talking about for molecules with, with no polarity or dipole or hydrogen bonding? Someone else? Someone else? Van der Waals forces. And what affects the strength of the Van der Waals forces? Why do some molecules have stronger Van der Waals forces than others? How big the molecule is. Okay. So what can we tell from this? Sulfur is the biggest. So phosphorus hangs around in fours, P4. Chlorines hang around in pairs, Cl2. Argons hang around on their own. What about sulfur? That's disappointing. I had, had a model in my box here just the other day, and it's gone. That's that's disappointing. Um, S eight. S eight. So they 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 form these very elegant little crown shaped molecules. of eight atoms in a ring. So if we're going to be entirely correct, it really should be one-eighth of S8. But you can get away just by writing S. Okay. S on its own is fine. But the, um, the, the state symbol is solid, please. Okay, solid. All right. All right. Okay, so we... We've covered a couple of standard questions there already. Firstly is, what's the definition of standard enthalpy of formation? Enthalpy change when one molar substance is formed from its elements 
all substances in their standard states under standard conditions. And writing an equation that has the standard enthalpy of formation of what, whatever it is, sodium chloride, ethanol. Okay. So let's look at how we use standard enthalpy of formation to solve a, a problem. Okay, let's say I want to know the enthalpy change for this chemical reaction. And let's assume everything's in its standard state, in which case they'd all be gases. So that's ethene on the left, reacting with hydrogen, probably with a nickel catalyst at around about 60 degrees, and making ethane. Okay. Well, all of those substances can be made from the elements. So down here, I could have a couple of carbons, and I could have three lots of hydrogen gas down there. Those are the elements that make up everything on both sides. Now I can look up the enthalpy of formation for ethane, ethene, and hydrogen. And those values are plus 52 over there, minus 85 over there. <coughs> Enthalpy of formation of hydrogen gas is zero. Can anyone think why that might be? H2? Right, H2 doesn't have to react to make H2. You know, if I wrote an equation H2 gas goes to H2 gas, well the Enthalpy change for that reaction zero because I haven't done anything. I've just got a balloon of gas. So enthalpy change of formation for elements in their standard states will always be zero. I'm just going to make a note of that. It's an element in its standard state. You don't have to have an element in its standard state, could you? I could use hydrogen liquid if I wanted. But if it's an element in its standard state, delta HF is zero, by definition. Okay, by definition. Okay, so Hess's law states that Enthalpy change is independent of the route taken. So if I want to work out this delta H up here, that one there, it's going to be the same whichever route I take. So whether I go straight from ethene and hydrogen to make ethane, or if I go somehow kind of to the elements first and then back to make ethane. So just notice that the direction that we're going, we start with ethene and hydrogen, I'm going in this direction to make the elements, and then I'm going in that direction to make the products. So going from ethene to carbon and hydrogen is going in the opposite direction to the 52, so that's going to be minus 52. And, and minus zero if... You know, if that's going to make any difference. And then we're going in the right direction of that minus 85 arrow, so we'll just use minus 85 as it is. Okay. Which is whatever it is. What is it? Minus 137. Kilojoules per mole. Okay, let's do another example. Uh, just one 
these are all gases apart from water, which is of course a liquid in its standard state. Okay. That's the reaction that we're trying to calculate delta H for. Could you draw me a similar little diagram, please, for this reaction? It's sometimes called a Hess diagram or a Hess cycle. And it just shows how we can relate these things to, well, in this case, the elements. So if you could just try and finish the rest of that Hess diagram or Hess cycle for me, thanks. Okay, so we need, we need some N2 and we need a couple of H2s and we need an O2. And that makes our little box of elements down there, doesn't it? Do you know what, though? We know what the elements are, don't we? I mean, we know that, you know, we've got nitrogen and hydrogen and oxygen in the equation. So, I could just do this. I could just say these are the elements down here. That'd be all right. Okay. Let's put some arrows on. So the arrows just have to come generally from... Um, the, our box of elements. Let me give you some numbers. N2H4, H2O, minus 2, 4, 1.8. 3, 6, fix. Oh, 4, 6, fix for some reason. Okay. All right. Can you calculate me a value for delta H for the reaction as written, thanks? Um, so, yeah, hydrogen, uh, sorry, oxygen and nitrogen are both zero by definition. So we've got the um, delta H for water has to be two lots of minus 241.8. Why two lots? Because there's a two in the equation. We remember from our that, that slide about ammonia, that if we double the equation, if we're making twice as much stuff, then that'll release twice as much energy. So two lots of minus 241.8. And then Hydrazine is uh, 50.6. We're going in the opposite direction to the arrows. That'll be minus as well. Gives us what? Minus 5, 3, 4.2. It's a pretty, um, pretty exothermic reaction. Let's do... Do one more, but just before we do it, I'm going to introduce you to an idea. Okay, let's. We're, we're always starting with reactants on the left, and we're always working out delta H here, and we're always making products on the right, and we're always going to have the elements down here every time we draw these S diagrams, and the arrows are always going to be coming out of the elements to make the reactants and coming out of the elements to make the products. And we're always going to have the delta HFs for the reactants here and the delta HFs for the products there. Okay. And because we're always going from reactants to products, we're always going to be going in this direction. This is an important point. Pay attention. We're always going to be going in this direction towards the elements and then going back in that direction. So it's always going to be, we're always going to be changing the sign of delta HF for the reactants and keeping the sign for delta HF for the product. So I can generalize this. For any reaction, delta H will be, anyone do any maths? What, what does it mean? Sum. Sum. Sum of all of the delta HFs of the products take away 
all of the delta Fs of the reactants. Which gives us our first equation for this topic. And we like equations because if we have an equation, we can put the numbers into it and the equation kind of does the work. Okay, so for this one, which is going to be a way of making ethanol that doesn't involve starting with the elements. Delta HF data for C2H4, I'm sure we had this on the board earlier, it's plus 52. And ethanol. Sorry, that should be water, shouldn't it? Sorry. What happened there? Sorry about that. Sorry, Internet. H2O in its standard state, minus 242. We're going to round it to its nearest kilojoule per mole. That's better. Ethanol. Liquid minus 46. Okay. So can you work out the delta H for that reaction, please? And try and use the, uh, the formula here to do that. Sum of delta H F products minus sum of delta H F reactants. Right, in an exam, this is worth three marks. What are the three marks for, do you think? Come on, somebody else. No passengers in this classroom. Go on. But I, I've told you to use the formula. You would get a mark for drawing a correct head cycle. You're right, though. You get a mark before that. Okay, but you get a mark for the formula. Okay, so product minus reactants. I haven't actually done any work yet. All I've done is write down a formula. Tick, you've got a mark. Okay. Hey, you lose it if your answer's wrong. So if you write down the right formula and go on to get the answer wrong, you still get one mark, which is the point I'm kind of trying to make here. Right, what's our next mark? Well, the next mark is for putting the right numbers in. So uh, I need products first. Product is ethanol, and that's just going to be minus 46. That's easy. Minus the reactants. So the reactants are... Ethene, well, there's only one of those, 52. And two lots of minus 242. Now, I've done this just to illustrate a point. I haven't done any calculations yet. All I've done is write down numbers. But there's a mark for that. Because it shows that you can, you can pull the numbers out and you can use the right data in the right places with the right plus signs and minus signs. And now... We can get an answer, yes? Oh, flipping egg. Sorry, internet. I'm going to have to retake this now. Did I press, did I press, um, did I press go? Ah, damn it. Thank you, Eddie. Have a cheery bar. Right, let's start again. What was that about getting a mark for writing the right numbers down? Um, okay, so we will get a mark for, for writing those numbers down. And then we get the answer. Addy, can you tell us what the right answer is, please? Um, 144 kilojoules per mole. Is that right? Is that what everyone else gets? Yeah. I, should, I should follow my own. Yeah, it's positive. 
Again, try and keep in the habit of always putting a sign because um, that will kind of remind you that it, you know, positive or negative is really important. Right. I think we'll just do one more example and then this will really reinforce this. Again, can you use the equation, thanks. Okay, so this is an actual uh, exam question. Has that has that look of an old exam question to me, but it's still an actual exam question. First mark, state Hess's law. Use it together with the data given in the table below to calculate the standard entropy change for the following reaction: MgO, HCl, MgCl2. No, that is law is just just in words. I mean, you could you could do all of that. And that would probably be right. It probably did your mark. It's probably a big law. Temperature change is five words. Okay, I'll put that up on the board. Now, should be getting minus one forty two.